We move on from the Queen of Sparta tournament for a matter of moments, but we stay in the ring in our first Muay Thai bout of the evening. It's a 185 pound Muay Thai bout. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the Dynamic Mortgage Concepts Red Corner. Please make welcome, Mike, the Asylum Collins. Six foot two, both obviously weighed in at 185, and fairly even in the record as well. Five and one for PJ McGee, four and four for Mike Collins. <laughs> PJ McGee is apparently an accurate striker, <laughs> and Mike Collins is a freestyle fighter. Uh, these Muay Thai fights, obviously, as you know, are my favorite. I love to watch these guys get in and bang. Uh, I'm excited to kind of see what these guys bring to the table, uh, both with some significant experience. Well-bounced gloves being worn by the Muay Thai fighters. Uh, does not feel good to get clubbed upside the head with only that little bit of padding. No, it does not. <laughs> and, and now, uh, I can see fighting two. out of the Blue Course Shooting Center Blue Corner, please make welcome P.J. McGee. Mike Collins with uh, Denver's own J-Ho Justin Newton, the number eight ranked heavyweight, or light heavyweight, or sorry, lightweight in glory right now. We've got PJ McGee making his way to the ring right now, representing Ludwig Martial Arts and Bang Muay Thai. Uh, this should be a very interesting matchup. Uh, Justin Newton, you know, being Mike Collins' coach, uh, very technical striker, likes to throw a lot of jabs, a lot of flying knees, so we'll see if that's something that comes to the table tonight. Then obviously, uh, the Ludwig Martial Arts team, very diversified in their striking. TJ Dillashaw in that corner. Uh, so, it'll be, a, it'll be an interesting bout. Yes, indeed, and Coach Michael Sullivan also in the corner for Mr. Mike Cullivans. He's a Sambo practitioner, but uh, you know that's his primary style, but I, I know him well. He also comes from a really varied background in combat sports and, um, you know, everything from straight up boxing to Full this 185-pound Muay Thai bout is presented by Moody Insurance Agency. It's now time to meet the fighters first. Fighting out of the Dynamic Mortgage Concepts Red Corner. Representing Pound for Pound Fitness from Littleton, Colorado. Please make welcome Mike, the Asylum College. And his opponent, fighting out of the Blue Core Shooting Center Blue Corner, representing Ludwig Martial Arts in IETA, California, from Rialto, California. Please make welcome PJ McGee. This 185 pound Muay Thai bout is scheduled for three two minute rounds. Referee Tom Johnson. All right, gentlemen. Collins, the taller fight. fighter, wearing the, the primarily time. black Let's trunks. All time. Let's touch gloves. Get after it. Representing uh, the Sambo system. And JR, we are going back. We have, this is an elimination bout, so it's an amateur bout. So we've got three two minute rounds. I expect the pace to be fairly quick, uh, but let's see what these guys come out with. Yep, and McGee, uh, as we referenced, representing Bang Muay Thai, wearing the silver trunks. And looking to work those inside leg kicks real early, which is always a good uh, good thought against a southpaw fighter since that right leg is forward. But immediately switching back to orthodox is Williams. Collins, sorry. And boy, Collins came across nicely with that body kick to the rib cage. Wow. These strikes are allowed here, even if, uh, or rather, even though we are in an amateur fight and it takes X amount of experience in Colorado to be allowed to be in a Muay Thai fight that 
also lets you throw knees. These guys have that experience, so we get the treat of watching them utilize all their weapons. Devin Collins is back in that southpaw position. He did check that last leg kick, which was nice. Looking to set up some power shots with that right hook. And Collins using that height advantage well. He's throwing a lot of very long techniques, techniques from the outside like that up there. And then as he closes in, showing his experience in that he doesn't let his punches be smothered by the fact that he gets in too close. Yeah, he threw a nice deep, and now McGee is coming back with a nice combo there, nice tie up. Uh, and in the elimination bout, I think they can still throw knees, but only to the body. Yeah, they're going through some rule changes here in Colorado and sort of feeling out what they're doing with uh, various strikes and different techniques. And so it can change up a little bit, uh, even from one show on to the next. But basically what they're doing is trying to get a freer set of rules and allow these athletes to utilize more striking implements. And a nice little scrappy end to the first round there. McGee doing a good job keeping his hands moving until the final bell sounds. Yeah, that was a really good first round for Collins and McGee. It's going to be a hard round for the judges to score. I feel like Collins landed a, you know, a bit more damage with his legs. I felt like McGee landed a few of the cleaner punches. And it's so hard to read on the judges what they're going to score highly. And, and, and especially with, and uh, I'll back off my comment for a second as we go into the replay here. And, we're talking about Collins managing that distance nicely and not stepping in. And, you know, so many fighters get excited and they just think, oh, I got to get close. I got to club this guy. Collins showing some nice experience there. But what I was going to say as far as the judges go is with some of these rules being in a bit of a transition stage, even more difficult for us to know what they may be thinking. I agree with that. Let's see if this pace picks up in round number two. The feeling out process is kind of over. Both these guys <laughs> kind of seem to know what they want to do. We're right back at it. And McGee immediately goes to that inside leg kick. You talked about what an effective weapon that is. Man, that's just such a hard part of the body to condition to be able to accept kicks. It is, and uh, Collins is doing a good job. He's switching back and forth from southpaw to orthodox stance, which for the people at home that may not be super versed in that basically that's just which foot is forward so a southpaw stance is going to be your right foot forward meaning your power hand is your left hand orthodox stance means your left foot forward with your power hand being your right nice technical breakdown there and mcgee uh, i'm gonna float back about 30 seconds here really nice job in the clinch utilizing those knee strikes not only the fact that he was just throwing knees in the clinch but utilizing both knees and going to varied targets with them and what I'd like to see from both of these guys is a little bit more setups with their kicks. They're both kind of throwing single kicks. Both of them aren't really landing any damage, so they need to kind of get their hands up in their opponent's face, set that kick up with something so it lands. Collins able to get that kick up high so easily. There's just no effort for him to bring that foot up. And McGee, fortunately for him, aware of it and keeps that double forearm block well in place. Nice right straight by McGee. Looking to pressure forward a little bit. A good combo, a nice right hook. Getting out before any other damage can land. And again, going high is Collins. And again, McGee keeping his guard in place. And that's uh, where you're talking about using something to set it up. Try to bring those hands down a little bit. Work a couple of body shots and then flip that kick upstairs. Yeah, and that kick from McGee is so powerful. Good flurry. 10-second clacker sounded. Nice flurry at the end by uh, McGee. I would like to see Collins, you know, that, that left kick he's throwing is very powerful, but it's being absorbed by the gloves of McGee. I'd like to see him throw some body kicks, get him thinking about that, and then be able to bring it upstairs. Agreed, and we know that body kick has powerful effect for him because he landed very successfully starting out round number one. So, yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. Don't flash those really high techniques without trying to set it up with something else that's already brought the hands down. 
And for McGee, if I'm in his corner, I'm telling him, oh, you're looking back at the replay. A nice flurry at the end. This is actually what I was just about to talk about. McGee has done real good at landing some big left and right hooks in those flurry exchanges. Think about his coach. I'm telling him to try to get inside. Don't stay long so that head kick can come and just start throwing those hooks. Yeah, referee Tom Johnson makes sure the mouthpieces are in. Touch of gloves for sportsmanship, then I'll kick you in the head. Away we go. <laughs> and <laughs> Collins coming right back out in that southpaw stance, looking to land a kick, I think, again. And boy, McGee just brutalized the inside of his leg to open the round. And a very good flurry by McGee. Not considered a knockdown. They're going to call that a slip, so no points scored on that. Another inside leg kick by McGee. I would just love to see him either set that up with something or follow it up with something. After throwing that inside leg kick, you're set up for that straight right. You know, just land something, get his attention. And Collins starting to feel those punches as he backed up. His head came straight up. And I think for a moment, he was kind of wondering maybe where he was for a second, uh, didn't have a shell up real strong. So good work by McGee here late in the fight. Did get flashed a little bit, and you can see he tried to turn his back, which isn't really a great idea, but a lot of times that's just instinct, trying to shy away from those punches. Trying to throw out some flashy kicks, though. Knows he's got to finish with something to win this round. Good work on that outside uh, left side, both up and down the body by Collins. And we talked about don't throw just the head kicks. So here late in the third, maybe his corner was in, in his ear about that a little bit because he is working some kicks to varied levels. Referee Johnson going to split him apart, let him come back out to the center of the ring. And you can hear J-Ho yelling, set it up with the jab. Make sure you're throwing something before that kick. And I think they're going to call that a push. Yep. It's just a little stagger in the footwork there. Collins lands the jumping kick late in the fight. Only about five seconds left, and McGee Beautiful throws a left crushing hook. left oh, hand. And down and I he think goes. that's going to be called a knockdown. That's, that's definitely gonna a knockdown. That's going to be the uh, end of the fight. Our timer is out. They're not going to be able to re-engage after this, but that will be counted as a 10-8 round. End of the fight right there, and... Collins comes forward on wobbly legs to greet McGee for the end of the fight. And let's, uh, I guess, wait for the judges to tell us. <laughs> Basically, it comes down to how did you see the first two rounds? Because we know how round three played out. Yeah, and I don't know how the judges are going to score this. You know, McGee, uh, sorry, Collins landed a bunch of good kicks, but they were all blocked. I didn't really see anything up top that landed cleanly. Nothing really damaged McGee on those. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how the judges score that. Yeah, you know, a lot of good techniques, but if it's not causing any damage, how much credit can you give to it? So 100% agreement with you there. And, and I think the other thing, too, is both fighters did a good job of trying to maintain control in the center of the ring. That's something you see a lot is ring control, octagon control in these combat sports. Who's trying to take control? And both of them spent a pretty even amount in both sides. So I don't want to be a judge in this one. I'm not even going to give a prediction because it'll be wrong. <laughs> and checking out the knockdown there on the replay. McGee able to put his hands together and lay on the combination that could be possibly what sealed the deal for him. Yeah, uh, Sean Patrick over waiting to get the word here. Uh-oh. Looks like referee Johnson found something in the ring, and it kind of looks like a tooth. Uh-oh. Shades of UFC 1. Oh, no, wait. That tooth went out of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass on catching that one. All right, Sean Patrick. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge McAvoy scores about 30-26 McGee. Judge Garcia scores about 28-28 draw. Judge Hilsebeck scores about 29-28, declaring your winner by majority decision, P.J. McGee.
right, a majority decision for Mr. McGee. Moving over to the cage for the, the next fight. We'll be back in just a couple to go do home that. With the victory, we'll take it uh, to our sponsors for a quick word, and then Bailey Winters will have the post-fight interview. We'll be back with another uh, Muay Thai fight. All right, I'm back here now with PJ McGee, who just won a Muay Thai fight against a very tough Mike Collins. PJ, Mike is a very technical Muay Thai fighter. Um, his style is very straightforward. He doesn't like to be brawled. What was your strategy going in to get this win? Trying to keep my distance. He's a uh, a lot bigger than me in my eyes. So I had to make sure I cut angles and not get hit by his power. So um, you won by majority decision. One of the scores was 28-28 draw. How do you feel about that? I felt it could have been even um, until I got the two knockdowns. I think that's where I may have edged him out a little bit. You got the knockdowns. There was one point where he caught your kick, but he ended up on the ground. That's where I kind of felt like it was going your way. When did you feel like you had the fight won? Actually, right after that. So he's known for his sweeps, and I know that. I worked on planting my legs, so he kicked it. I didn't go anywhere. He went down instead. So I made sure I stood in my ground. All right. Anybody you want to thank tonight? I want to thank uh, everybody at BMT headquarters. I want to thank my wife. I want to thank IETA in California, my home city, Rialto, and all my supporters. Congratulations on the win tonight. You did a great job.